Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content. Not all of our invited speakers were able to make it in person to the great telco debate this year, but they still wanted to take part. So joining me now as an expert witness for the debate, Will Private 5G Kill the Wireless LAN? is Terrier Jensen, SVP Network and Cloud Technology Strategy at Telenor. Hello Terrier, very good to see you again. Um, let me let me start off by asking you why should enterprises and verticals why should they be interested in private 5g what's the unique attraction to them now we, when you see that the private 5g or private networks as uh, as we call them uh, actually allow the, each of the enterprise customers a uh, specific experience when it comes to my own network uh, and that of course uh, implies that they can connect uh, the devices the customers sorry the users uh, the applications and whatever they need in their own in their own way and defining and also pri giving priority to the traffic in the in whatever is they needed in that sense so so that's uh, the whole fundamental of a private 5g actually you give this my my network experience so so what characteristics are asked for uh, from the from the enterprises typically come in the buckets of a higher speed higher capacity lower latency and so forth but even more so is probably the predictability or the stability of doing this. So, so it always works. Uh, so that's the kind of the key fundament of a, of a private uh, 5G network. Uh, that is not something, you know, uh, which works no one done, but it always works. And that's so important for, for many of the enterprise customers, what we have been engaged with, uh, because this goes into the, the business critical processes. That means that it needs to work, and if it doesn't work, you know, major part of the of the process of the business might, might actually stop. Uh, as part of this, of course, is the, on the private 5G. It's also the improvement on the security side, which is a rather fundamental uh, request from from the enterprises. And all these kind of things needs to come together, you know, in order to deliver this uh, my network experience, which is then, of course, could be realized in various way, either like a slice or like a dedicated network or, or so forth. So there are a number of, of ways, you know, in order to, to meet this. We also have this, in some cases, a request for autonomic networks, uh, meaning that you should be able to run this in isolation, for example, on the on a truck or a trailer, on, a, on, on wheels, or it could be in remote areas, for example. So, so uh, all these kind of characteristics comes as part of the private 5G and then, of course, delivers this my network experience, uh, what the customers are asking for. OK, so what's the attraction to telcos? You know, given that telcos will not be the only provider and partner of these private 5G networks, why should they be interested? No, that's, uh, that's, of course, a good question. I think from, from telco point of view, uh, we see that uh, we, are, uh, we should know how to build networks. Uh, we have been running public networks and wide area networks for, for decades. Uh, and also uh, private networks is, is within the scope of what we are able to do and, and uh, what we'd like to do. So we see that uh, we know how to manage and also on connecting devices and applications in a secure manner. So for us, it's, uh, it's a natural extension, of course, on the on the public network into the private network space. And in a lot of those private network uh, deliveries, uh, we actually are leveraging the public network. That could be through a kind of a slice or a pre-slice uh, setup. Uh, so, so from the telcos, of course, we are uh, see that private network is a very interesting uh, business proposition. And we also see that private networks is a step, a foot in the door, in a way, to a number of additional uh, use cases and providing value to the over enterprise customers in a much, much, much wider context than what we have been uh, engaged in so far. So, so uh, private networks is uh, for us uh, one of the big uh, important tools in the toolbox, uh, and it's uh, it's one way to engage with the customers uh, in, in and solving their needs in uh, uh, in a much more holistic manner than what we have been doing for. Uh, and then, of course, we see that the needs from the enterprise customers and the, and the starting points are, are greatly different. Some of them are just starting from simple characteristics like connecting high definition videos, for example, which typically ask for a higher speed and perhaps some on-premises uh, processing of video feeds. Others are asking for connecting a lot of, of sensors, uh, which then, of course, uh, for, for example, connecting robots. Uh, which then, of course, for a, for a stable connectivity and making sure that that information is uh, forwarded to a central place, uh, while others are asking for autonomy. And again, so, 
So all these kind of things are characteristics we as an operator uh, are able to deliver on and what's also we, what we see in other contexts. So for us, of course, it's a very appealing uh, proposition to go into this private network space. And I think we also meet uh, enterprise customers on the same level. They see that connectivity coming from telcos uh, could actually be uh, very ma well matching what they are looking for. And then, of course, it's no secret that telcos have been delivering critical services to uh, to a number of cases and we also certified by the national authorities to deliver these kind of services so that's kind of a match matching away from both sides in the which comes together in this uh, private network uh, space and just addressing the, the the motion of this particular debate um, does private 5g have the potential to replace existing lands you know especially those 802.11 wi-fi type networks for enterprises and verticals could private 5g do it all yeah, thanks. Uh, that's a that's a great question. Uh, my private, my, my my personal opinion about this is that uh, typically every technology has its strengths and weaknesses. Uh, so so uh, I do not come from you know that private five G or mobile network should you know replace everything Wi Fi uh, is doing or or has been doing. I think it's uh, Wi Fi has delivered a proven value for several years. Uh, so it's hard to argue that that Wi-Fi doesn't have strong factors. But I think it's important to break also the Wi-Fi discussion into a number of, of elements. For example, one thing is the technology, uh, which is the Wi-Fi specification, like the IEEE, for example. So another factor is the spectrum itself, which typically tend to be unlicensed, which of course come with, with uh, some issues there. Uh, and the third factor is the ecosystem and the, and the great uh, the in, involvement from various partners on how it's easy to integrate with Wi-Fi. And of course, the, 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 the fourth factor is not to forget about the, the cost levels uh, and that uh, with the sheer volume of Wi-Fi, you know, the unit costs are, are quite OK. So I think it's, uh, that's just uh, some of the factors to, to illustrate why Wi-Fi has been is a success and has been a success so far. Then, of course, uh, uh, there is not a secret uh, anymore that, that several enterprises have been trying uh, Wi-Fi for some of these uh, business critical applications, uh, what we talked about earlier. Uh, and actually, they're coming to telcos and asking for rather, let's look into mo mobile technologies and then particular 5G in order to solve this. Uh, a reason is that uh, in many cases that uh, when they have tried Wi-Fi, they didn't uh, they didn't really succeed do achieving what they wanted uh, could be due to the technology itself but probably more more into the licenses and the un unlicensed uh, spectrum what wi-fi is using uh, so we have a number of, of requests from enterprises the, for example one big warehouse uh, which was trying to connect uh, all the forklift trucks with wi-fi uh, they tended to end up in one of the corners of the of the warehouses and the reason is that that's where the connectivity uh, of the Wi-Fi was not good. So when they, connect they lost the connectivity, the trucks stopped actually. So at, uh, after a couple of, of uh, minutes or almost now about an hour, um, ba basically all the trucks ended up in the corner. Uh, uh, and then the, of course we, we introduced then the 5G uh, instead of this, uh, which used a license spectrum uh, and a more, bit more stable re uh, radio technology in, in this case. Uh, and then, of course, the, the truck could be could be uh, moving or all the way around in the in the warehouse, and and the, uh, of course, this is a not only a technology discussion about Wi-Fi versus 5G. It's a complete solution for the for the enterprise, and it's so important to understand that when we discuss these things, it's not only the technology itself; it's actually the business criticality for enterprise customers, which needs to be highest on the agenda. So put together the, the solutions which are, you know, solving the, the business needs. And we also have a num number of other discussions what we have in enterprises, not only like these business critical needs, we have a combination of office support, for example, and, and connecting uh, robots, connecting trucks, uh, connecting those kind of things. So typically they are they're asking for a combination of, of 5G and private 5G and also Wi-Fi. So uh, in my mind, there will be a, you know, a balancing of these technologies over time. Of course, the balance might be changing uh, depending on exactly the, the business needs in, the, in the each of the case. So, so that's uh, how we see it. So, so I don't see you know, that 5G you know, will be killing Wi-Fi as such. Of course, they will be taking positions here and there, but uh, there will also be plenty of room for Wi-Fi as we see it in the next years at least. Terry, great insights there. Thanks for sharing those with us. Thank you so much for joining us and taking part in the great telco debate.
You can watch all of our virtual expert witnesses along with full recordings of each of the sessions from this year's Great Telco Debate right here on Telecom TV. For now though, thank you for watching and goodbye.